Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a Mac OS toolbar application, which will going to be interacting with chat GPT. Now, the first thing you need to do is to go to platform.openai.com and you need to register for keys. So go to person, go to view API keys and generate a brand new key. Now keep in mind that once you generate the key, it's going to show you the key so that you can copy, but it's not going to, here we go, you can see the key, it's going to show you, but uh, this is the last and the only time you're going to see the key. So make sure you copy it, okay? So I'm going to delete that key, there we go. Now once our key has been deleted, and that's great, the next thing that we want to do is to create a Mac OS application. So I'm using over here Xcode. I'm going to select Mac OS app and let's go say next. I will simply say chat GPT toolbar and interface. Make sure that you select Swift UI. Let's go ahead and create that. So it's going to create some sort of a default code for us, as you can see. Let me go one, two, a little bit. Just check the settings of our Xcode. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Now, we have created this. That's fine. But there are a couple of different things we need to be doing over here, right? The first thing what I would like to do is to create some sort of an interface where a person can type in, type something, and then press a search button, and also ability to list something. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that stuff and going to add at stack. In the at stack, I'm going to say text field. I'll say search. And in the search, I'm simply going to say search. So this will be our binding variable that I'm going to be using. I'll simply call it search. You can call it anything you want search there we go okay and this is how it looks like on the right hand side you can see we can go ahead and add some text field style to be rounded border okay great and next thing we can add a button and i'm going to use the button with the action we're going to put the action this means when the button is actually clicked and some sort of an image so I'm just going to say system name and some sort of an image, like a search image probably. So let's go ahead and try to use a search image. You can just use the icon name for that particular image. And I don't really want these borders of the button to be showing up. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and increase the size, like the title. And now I can say button style can be borderless. I don't really want the border anyways. Perfect. And it will be disabled or enabled. Okay, so if I say disabled true, the button is disabled. So at what point the button will be enabled? Well, if you enter something in the text box. So private var is form valid, boolean. And if the search is not empty, then we want the button to be valid. And you can actually add empty characters or spaces over here also i'm just going to leave it like that but you should probably enter the that the spaces are also not allowed okay so is form not valid okay now one of the things with this particular interface is that if you have to run it you have to click right there to run it and bring it forward i'm not sure why it's taking like two of these but uh, Xcode preview is right here. So now I can actually enter some text and as soon as I enter the text, you can see that the button is actually getting uh, act activated. Okay, so that part is done. Now, one of the other things that we really need to be doing over here is we really need to be integrating it with ChatGPT. And one of the things that or one of the libraries or packages you can use to integrate with ChatGPT 
is a really great package. It's called OpenAI Swift. So let me go ahead and see if we can search for OpenAI Swift. OpenAI Swift. It should be right here. This is created by Adam Rush. It's really simple to use. He Adam has made sure that it is extremely simple to use. Uh, so you can actually see the code over here. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that we add the package from uh, Swift Package Manager. So I'm going to go to my file, add packages. And in the search box, I'm just going to go ahead and type in the OpenAI Swift and you can see the package and I can add the package. Simple. And this is a really nice library because it's so easy to use. So let's go ahead and add that. Okay, so now we have added the library. The other thing we need to do is we need to use the library. So that will be importing the OpenAI Swift. Great, so now we have imported it. Next will be to create an instance of OpenAI using OpenAI Swift, and we need to pass in the authentication token. Remember the authentication token? That's the one that you're gonna be generating right here, the API key. So hopefully you have captured it and put it in a safe place because now you're gonna need it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it. Don't use this key, use your own key. Okay. The other thing that we want to do is we want to capture all the responses that we're getting. And we're gonna make it really simple. I'm just gonna call it responses from the server that we're getting. String empty array. And when the person presses the button, this is where we want to perform our search. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call a function over here, perform search. And right over here, we will implement perform search. Perform search. Okay. Now when we perform the search, I do want to say that this is a search from myself. So the first thing I'm just gonna go ahead and append is I'm just gonna say that this is you, this is like me, all right? And whatever the search that I'm doing. So I'm just gonna put it right there. And now I can use the openai.send function, the send completion. And they also have one with the async, so you can definitely use that if you want to. And we need to pass in a couple of different things. The search criteria, so I'm just gonna pass in search. And maximum tokens. Now, if you pass in 500, what I've seen is that it actually does return you more data. So I think that's the maximum tokens. Uh, it might be like the segments that it's returning. And then finally, it returns you the completion handler using the result enum type. So now we can go ahead and perform switch case, success, we will get the success. And we will do something when we get the success. I guess the thing that we want to do is to use or create a response, whatever the server is sending, prefix it with ChatGPT so that we know that ChatGPT is saying that. And over here, we can go ahead and say success.choices.first and we can say text, unwrap it. If it's nothing, then we're just gonna use the default as empty string. And finally, we can say responses.append, and we can append the response, okay? The other case will be the failure, where we will get the failure, and it will be a good idea to display it on the screen, but for now, failure is basically an error, so I'm just gonna say failure.localize description. Just display the failure, okay? So everything is being added to the responses and the only thing left to do is to display those responses. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, try to find out how we can do that. So right over here inside the ad stack, we have, we need to get into the ad stack and we just need to go through the responses using our list. So responses, ID, self, response in, text, and 
since it's only text or strings, we, we can simply say response and that's it, done. And now let's go ahead and run the app. Okay, so this is what our app kind of looks like right now. Let's search for something. What is the capital of USA? And this is our question, which is you. We're saying, what is the capital of USA? And let's see if it actually returns. It's taking quite a bit of time right now, unless I'm doing something wrong. It should have brought me something. Okay, yes, one other thing that we need to do is currently our application cannot really perform outgoing actions, meaning it cannot really communicate with like a network. So let's go to our actual app, which is right here. And somewhere over here, we have the signing and capabilities. We need to see right here in the network, outgoing connection for the client and incoming connection for the server. So I'm just gonna say outgoing connection because we are kind of like the client. And now I can go back and try to run this app again. If you don't do that, then your application will not be able to communicate with the rest of the world, meaning like a server. Okay, now let's do it again. What is the capital of USA? And there we go, the capital of USA is Washington DC. So it looks like it's working perfectly fine. Uh, list all 50 states of US. It's more of a statement, I guess. And let's see if it actually lists out all the states. And there we go, it actually lists out all the states. Pretty good. And since we're inside the list, we can scroll it. It doesn't automatically scroll to the last one. That's a different story, but at least we can make it work. Okay, so our application looks like it's working, but it's not really a toolbar application, right? I mean, it's more of a, just a Mac app. We have to launch it. So it would be nice if it's like running in your toolbar so that we can easily connect to it and we can do whatever we want from the toolbar. So how can we make it better? How can we run it in a toolbar? Now there are different ways of running it in the toolbar. Um, let's go ahead and see how we can do that. I'm gonna to go to the ChatGPT toolbar app. This is kind of like the starting point of our app. And what we want to do is we want to also create an app delegate. App delegate, which is NS object ns application delegate so all of these we need to use an observable object okay um, next thing that we want to do i don't know if you actually need observable object so double check on that let's go ahead and remove observable object because we don't really have any published properties anyways uh, but it may be needed somewhere we're going to find it out so the first thing we need is a status item and popover okay now, popover is so that we can display our application in a popover. Next, we are going to say main actor function and then application did finish launching. So when the application is finished launching, the one thing that we need to do is to get the status item. Now, what exactly is the status bar? Well, status bar is the status bar where you actually see all the stuff. So basically we're getting this part right there on the top, right there actually, okay? And what we want to do is we want to kind of like create a button over there and we want to put the button, when we click the button, then we should show a popover. So I'm gonna go ahead and say status button, status item or status button, I guess in this case and we'll get the status item dot button. Okay, there we go. So from that status button, we can set some sort of an image for that status button. Now this is kind of up to you, whatever the image that you want to set, I'm just gonna set it to be an info dot circle. So it will simply display an information in a circle. And the most important part is if you click on that status button, what will happen? So we will call toggle popover, which by the way, the function that doesn't exist, okay? So that's important part that that particular function does not really exist right now. Don't worry because we're gonna create that objective C function toggle popover. 
Now when we're toggling the popover again, we will try to get the button. So if let button equals to status item dot button, if we get that, and if the popover is actually shown, well, then we will simply remove the popover or close it. Else, if the popover is not shown, so we will say popover dot show. And now we can show relative to the button bounce, wherever the button is. So I'm just gonna say button bounce of the view, which is button itself and preferred edge. This is kind of up to you, whichever preferred edge you want to use. I'm just gonna say min y, but you can play around with these different values. They're just for display. But the popover has not been initialized, so we have to also make sure that we are initializing the popover. That will be inside application did finish launching with options. We have to give it some sort of a height and width to our popover. This is kind of up to you how big or small you want the popover to be. You can also check the behavior of the popover to be transient. And finally, which is the most important part, we need to tell the popover that when you display the content that you're going to be displaying will be a view, the content view. Now, I can't really assign a content view over here because it has to be inside a controller. So I'm just going to say root view and content view. That is how you will host the Swift UI views in a UI kit application. Let's go ahead and run this. So I'm going to say control R, command R to run. And we would like to see something over there in the popover. It doesn't really display anything over here. So that's one of the things that I'm looking at, but I don't really see anywhere that it is telling me that, you know, uh, that we're using it because we forgot to do one thing. We forgot to connect the app delegate. So let's go ahead and connect the app delegate. Let's go inside the app file. There we go. And let's go ahead and run it. Okay, there we go. Now you see that right there. This is the information icon that we set right here. But uh, let's go ahead and click on it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, what is the capital of uh, US? Okay, it's working perfectly fine. It's scrollable and everything. But one of the things that you may have realized is when I'm launching it, it also launches this particular app. And I don't really want that. I mean, I don't really want to launch this particular app when our application is, you know, running. So let's see that how we can fix that part. So the way to fix that is to go to your application and info.plist and you can see all the keys over here. What we're going to do is we're going to add a brand new key and we are going to say application is agent and there we go, it comes up. And the value that we want to put over there is yes instead of no. So this means that it will be at the toolbar uh, and show at the toolbar and not like as a separate process running the app hopefully. So let's go ahead and see if we are not running anything. Okay, and let's go ahead and run it again. And now when you run it, you don't really see the application kind of popping up. The only thing you see is this toolbar app. And if I click on this toolbar, list all states of US, then basically you're running a, you know, running the app. And there we go. It actually works like a nice chat GPT Mac OS app. So there you have it. This is how you will create a Mac OS application using chat uh, GPT integrated with chat GPT, which is using also the OpenAI Swift. So definitely check out that amazing package from Adam Rush. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. If you are interested in learning more about how to create Mac OS applications, then check out my course, which is called Programming Mac OS Using Swift UI Project Based Learning. This is a great course and it will take you to your journey of creating Mac OS applications. You can see that there are some very practical applications, uh, which includes Reminders app, the Maps app, the Stocks app, the Menu Bar apps also. So this is going to be a great course for you. Thank you so much and hope you have enjoyed this video.